The next part to make, well, there's two parts actually, one that holds the indicator, and the other one that goes up in the collet or the chuck of your mill. Um, they've both got a 12mm square on the end with a 6mm radius on it. Um, I'm going to have a go at making this one first, the top one. So I've got this piece solid square which I'm going to put in the shaper and machine it down to a yeah, whole lot of it down to 12 mil and then I've got something I can I'll put in the four jaw then machine the, the shank on it and I'll possibly before I put in the four jaw I may even um, drill this and put this 60 degree included angle in there as well which matches up against this angle here so we'll get this fitted up in the shaper and start mulling it off I just want to give a big thanks to Kevin from Machine NZ and Rusty Knox. I watched a video yesterday evening um, from Kevin who's been playing around with some mild steel on his shaper trying to get a really, really nice finish and he, he succeeded. Rusty Knox covered this some time ago in one of his videos and I'd forgotten all about it because I hadn't use the shaper much um, and I just forgot all about it but Kevin reminded me last night and what um, what they were saying is a shear tool all the videos I've seen in the past have always had a 45 degree angle roughly get you there um, Rusty Knox said was saying that on a smaller shaper you need more angle um, so, and Kevin had been playing around with it and he settled for 60 degrees, I believe. Um, I fit around with mine this morning and I went to 55 degrees with next to no, it's only got a very slight curve at the top. Um, it's next to nothing. I've done a cut on this other face, um, trialled it. And the finish I got absolutely blew my mind. It, I thought I was getting good finishes before, but no way. This, this just beats it hands down. Um, yeah, I only took, the cut I took was about two thou deep, um, just to put that nice top on it. That nice, yeah, and it, it had no chatter. I ran it at... Currently, I've got to set it uh, on the second speed, which is about 66 strokes a minute, I think. I'll have to double check in my book. But I ran the shear tool on the slowest speed, which is around 45, I believe, somewhere around there. I had no chatter issue, no nothing. And I put the, um, the piece under my microscope, and beautiful, unbelievable. So... I'm about 
just got to take a little bit more off this this piece here and what's in the machine now and then I'll put this in and then I'll show you it, show it working and I'll show you the end result. So thanks again Rusty Knox and Kevin. Um, yeah, you've just stepped the game up big time. Great, yeah, awesome. Thank you guys. Might be a little bit shaky here. I've got it by hand, but we torch to work right. Try and show you the gap under there. You can pick it up. How flat it is. It's not flat, flat, but it's not far off being flat. Let me just bring that down a touch. Oh, this camera a bit better. See, know whether you can see there or not. How flat, I don't know how this good this is going to come out on camera, but get down and touch more. There you go. See what I mean? How flat I've got it. Um, and I'm only running a 5,000 step over. I'm only running a 5,000 step over, and yeah, on a slower speed, which is 40 something strokes a minute. So I'll do this cut and show you what it's like. As you can see, it's just, just shaving it. I could have taken a touch heavier cut there, just another thing, I guess, but let's see what the results are after this. This is why I like to shape it so much. It's, it's, it all comes down to you in the end of what your geometry is like on your tool. Um, that's the fun part of it. I just picked up a um, eight pieces, set, uh, sorry, six pieces of high speed steel. Um, had some Circle C in it, um, Momax. A couple other brands in there. Um, a lot of it was 5.8, 5.8 squared, and uh, picked it up on eBay for a really good price. So I, was, I paid for this piece at the front here, on, it's in the tool holder now. It's a piece of half inch square. I paid um, 40 odd dollars for that for one piece at the local steel workplace here. That sort of stung the pocket a bit hard. Um, yeah, incredible. I picked all these other bits up for under $60 on eBay. So that was um, a really, really good find. That is just super smooth. See that there. I'm going to take another thou off that. And just clean that up a bit more. Bastard torch. I'll take another thou off and I'll bring it back. Man oh man, that finish is unbelievable thank you again Kevin and Rusty Knox you really made a difference here that's just smooth as a baby's bum that's just mind-blowing actually I didn't think I could ever get a finish like that I was really happy with the last when I had that reground at 45 degrees and um, was getting a pretty good finish but that's just yeah that's just really really cool there's no 
looking at the light reflection on it, there's no sign of any chatter. Um, I wouldn't like to take a very heavy cut with it. Well, it's not designed for that either, but... Um, go and check out Kevin's channel, Machine NZ and Rusty Knox. And they, they can explain it better than I can. So, I'll take it out. Here's the end result. I've got a couple of scratches on there where I was stuffing around, feeling it with the end of a rule. So, this is what I used to get. You can hear it there. Nothing. Oh, no. And it's just absolutely beautiful finish. Yeah, amazing. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I better get back to do some of this more work. You've been distracting me, Kevin and Rusty Knox. Unbelievable. You can blame you guys near while my project's late. Alright, this is 12.03, 12.03, I'm over the moon with that, um, it's a shame this piece of steel wasn't longer that I could have cut these two pieces out of one, like in one go, but I haven't got, didn't have a piece of steel that big. Well, I've decided I'm going to cut the top off this and then I'll flip it and then cut it to length. I decided I'll use this the slitting saw that I made, the arbor I made. So I've got it set up on the um, indicator attachment I made in the last video. And I've actually got it running pretty pretty darn true up and down like for squareness so I'll set up the other uh, the slitting saw now and um, we'll have a go I'll take the top off so it's sort of damage I can get up to there <laughs> and smooth, I'll give it that much. The way I lined this up was it's got a, a center point or just a pointer in the um, and just lined it up on the on the center punch mark. See how I've got that lined up so I'm going to shift the camera now um, and then I'll drill and around this hole and to put the 60 degree included angle the outside dimensioner of this one here is 10 mil, so I'll, I'll use this to get my 60 degree angle.
definitely 10 millimeters well I think I may have one there just um, it has raised a bit of a burr which I'll have to try and get off but um, I think I may have one because it there should have been half a mil of left up the top up here which it looks to be half a millimeter yep like we won, bloody beauty. Um, I've got a piece of coke can wrapped around the part in the fore jaw. Um, so it's on zero. It's within half a thou. on zero. I just bumped the indicator then to it's on, it's on zero. So it's within a thou all round, you'd say. So this has to be reduced down to ten millimeters I believe. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Sorry, down to six. Sorry, down to six. Um, once it's down to six mil, I can take it out, put in the collet chuck, and then put the... It's got to have a 30 degree or a 60 degree included angle chamfer on it, on this back edge where the coke can is there, uh, inside the jaws. So I can put that in the collar chuck to do that, which would be easier because I, I do want any I do want any more stick out while I'm trying to turn this piece. So it's gonna be an interrupted cut and we're just gonna have to see how it goes. It's gonna take quite a while to do this, I think. Six mil on the dot. I'll take it out of here now and put it in the collet chuck in here and do the 60 degree included angle on that on the square there to, to blend these two the square and the circle in. Well I am an absolute dick and forgot to press the record button. I zoomed the camera in and that's as far as I took it. Um, I'm pretty gutted right now because I got that radius put on there, but when I locked it up in the fore jaw, I had that coke can around it, which I thought would have been enough, but obviously it wasn't a bloody mud the top of it or the side of it. Pretty gutted about that. Um, it was looking a really nice part. But 
but um, <laughs> hopefully I can, when I put the radius around it, it won't be as noticeable, I hope. But just absolutely pissed right off because I should have known better. I didn't, but um, I got the, um, be a 30 degree radius on there, which was pretty tight. I've I zoomed the camera in <laughs> as far as I got. Sorry about that. So this is the way I got the radius on top of the part. Um, just machined up a couple of bits of aluminium, rough as guts, to 12 millimetres. Um, sat them on there and folded it around and used some wet and dry. And um, yeah, that's it. What I'll do is just do the edges now. Take this, take these two bits off, and then just um, deburr the edges, and we're done. Well, that's that piece of the puzzle complete. Um, still a bit cheesed off of them marks I put in it from the four jaw. Uh, managed to hide a bit of it. Bit of, um, there's one there I can't get rid of, um, but it's hidden behind here. <laughs> if you keep it that way up, it's hidden, no. Eh? But anyway, that's just got to live with that one, which is a damn shame. Um, but the rest I pretty much covered up. There's a little bit of that one there left. Um, oh, look, it's probably going to get dinged up over the years anyway. It's just a shame I was going so well. So, I've still got to make the washers for those yet. Um, but that actually rests in there really well. And it's, you know, if you rip it up tight, it's got no washer. I don't want to do it up too tight. But it actually holds pretty well. So... I've got to make another one of these again, but um, with the dovetail on the end, that's you know, the thread and the dovetail. Now I'll bring this, I'm going to machine up the square and all that. I'll get all that done off camera because you see me do this one. Um, I'll do that off camera and I'll bring this back when I'm um, cutting the thread and getting ready to put the dovetail on. So maybe he's enjoying this so far. I'm actually getting a bit of a buzz out of it. It's quite good. It's a tool I have for many years, and like this tool today, I made this tool, and you know, used it today. Pretty happy about that. And the slit and saw. Got to be happy. Make tools, you use them. That's the fun of it. Very enjoyable. <laughs>